So we all wanna have full control over our sounds as producers, but for some of us, that means learning the intricacies of FM synthesis. What's up guys, it's Aiden from EDM Prod, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how you can get started with FM synthesis. So let's dive in, but before we do, if you like some free sample packs, presets, and other PDF guides, etc., make sure to check out our free resources in the description. Okay, so let me give you an audio example of how the sound of FM synthesis is different. So let me play you a subtractive synth sound. Right, it's got that very kind of standard synthesis based uh, tonality to it. Let's play at a wavetable example. Now wavetable synths have that kind of harmonic uh, shifting sound because you've got any sort of movements you can get from a wavetable moving uh, are possible. So you get a lot of variety out of a wavetable synth. But when we come to FM synthesis, we have a specific sound that we kind of get out of it. So it has a very kind of harmonic belly type sound to it. Historically, the reason FM synthesis sounds so different from other forms of synthesis is because it was a purely digital form of synthesis. And as we'll get into, the processes involved involve creating these really, really rich waveforms that you could just not get through other forms of traditional subtractive or other synthesis types out there. Now today, if you've seen uh, any sort of bass tutorial on YouTube, you'll know that FM synthesis is a big part of modern day bass design, but Beyond that, it's also traditionally involved in creating a lot of cool bell and key sounds, a lot of rich pads, and also all sorts of crazy effects. So it's quite a versatile form of synthesis as we're gonna discover. Okay, so let's go into how FM synthesis actually works. So the analogy I wanna paint here is, imagine you're running up a hill and you're trying to run at a certain pace, but obviously running a hill naturally slows you down because gravity. At some certain point, when you start to reach the top of the hill, you kind of speed up because the incline becomes less and less. And then considering that you're running at the same rate, you'll start to actually move a bit faster because you're having to exert less effort and you'll naturally move faster as a result. And then when you come down the other side of the hill, you'll actually run faster without any sort of extra effort. It just happens. Now imagine you're doing this up and down multiple hills over and over again. This is the fundamental principle behind FM synthesis. You have a wave, which would be you running, which is modulated by another wave, which has its own peaks and valleys, creating a pitch modulation effect. Now, if we load up Serum here, we can think of FM synthesis as pitch modulation. And I'll also open up our uh, little uh, spec uh, wave analyzer here. Let's play a note. <laughs> Right, you can see that moving. And if I disable it, we get a normal uh, sine wave. So what's going on here is this LFO triangle here is modulating the coarse pitch of this in serum. Now, what happens when we increase the speed of this LFO? So we have a kind of slower movement. Let's speed it up. we actually start to get beyond the realm of rhythm and we actually become tonal with this movement. So it creates its own kind of sound and almost like it's self oscillating. So you can hear. It's got a really distinct pitch to it. Now we can also play around with this by increasing the amplitude of modulation. So not just the speed. And there you go. So both the pitch and speed of the modulation, or the amplitude and speed of the modulation affect the resulting tonality. Now imagine you can do this, but you play and change the rate of this LFO based on the pitch of the note you're using. That's essentially how FM synthesis is functioning. And using these relationships, which are called ratios, we'll get into that in a second, you can create some really interesting timbres. So we already know that 
based on that sound, FM synthesis functions very differently to other traditional forms of synthesis, like subtractive, where you start with a complicated waveform and you use filters and amp envelopes to change the shape of it over time. Whereas here, we're starting with basic shapes, like usually sine waves, and we're kind of modulating them with effects in order to add to them. And if we head back to the three examples I used earlier at the start of this video, we get some really cool variety of sounds. And that's just a taste of what's possible. And if you wanna dive into how these sounds are actually made, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be going in depth with all of this sort of stuff. So let's look at an example of an FM synth and I'm gonna be using Ableton's operator. It's quite a straightforward, but very, very powerful FM synth. You're welcome to follow along in any other number of FM synths. And I'm gonna cover a few at the end of the video. So once again, make sure you stick around. So instead of using oscillators, an FM synth like operator uses, well, operators. If we look at the bottom here, we can see that there's four sections here. Now other FM synths may have more than four operators. Some like FM8 have eight uh, and others have six. So what happens is you have, for example, one operator here, which has got the level at zero. And if we play this, we get a basic sine wave sound. Now, similar to what I was doing in Serum before, we have uh, these other operators by default feeding into this. So this is going to be what we call the carrier and we have these as the modulators. The way I like to think of this is if you've ever played the game Telephone, some people call it other names, basically the game where you uh, whispering something to someone and then by the time the message is carried on the result is very very different depending on what each person interprets the answer to be you, that's kind of the same way fm synthesis functions you start with a wave and then through the process of modulating it you get a very different sound from the original so in this case we'd have this as our original source being modulated by three prior levels of modulation and that's just the way this is set up by default You'll notice if I increase the level here, we're not just getting another sine wave, we're actually getting a kind of effect where it's like a squelch, right? If I even bring this envelope up, envelope up rather to actually continue the sound throughout the whole thing. So what we're getting is this uh, modulator modulating this carrier by the frequency of the note. And by default, all of these are set to modulate by the frequency of the note you're playing on your keyboard. Now we can actually go ahead and change some of these pitch uh, characteristics, which I'm gonna do a little later in the video, but you can do different levels of modulation with different settings. And if you play these down low, you get those really cool kind of bass textures. And each of these has a lot of potential to shape the sound in its own unique way. But what determines what modulates what? Now in a synth like Operator, and traditionally on a lot of FM synths like the original DX7, which was the first hardware uh, FM synth by Yamaha, basically they have a preset number of configurations you can use. And if you are using Operator, you can click in the bottom right here, which brings up this whole host of potential options. Now, the way you wanna think about this is this. The one that's linked at the bottom here is the one that's going directly to output. But if it's linked to another operator, that means it's a modulator. So at the bottom of all of these, the yellow one is the only one that is being sent directly to the output. So the yellow one is the only carrier. When we get into these configurations, we notice that we have two output uh, operators, which means that we can get, you know, kind of more layered sounds rather than everything, just modulating everything. Same with this one. This one's back to one output being modulated by three different operators, but in parallel, not in series. We've got two and two. We've got one modulating three outputs. We've got two standalone outputs and then one modulated output. And then we've got a all direct output one. This treats the synth more like a standard subtractive kind of synth because it's no frequency modulation going on. So there's a few different configurations as we'll explore, if you're in a synth like FM8, you can actually customize these and do any number of crazy combinations to get really cool textured sounds. But for now, we're just gonna stick with these simple algorithms we've got in Operator. Let's hear how some of these sound when we change them. So 
So just by changing the algorithm, we get a host of different sounds. And it's really fun to sometimes just switch these around and see what works. But a key tenet in actually practically understanding FM synthesis, and if we go back to the original one, is understanding the relationship between the operators. I'm gonna bring these all down and just use the first modulator and the carrier here, so A and B. We have these pitch controls over here, and this greatly determines the resulting sound, as well as the level of modulation, like you heard in the Serum example earlier on. So if I play this, what we're doing is we're essentially modulating two sine waves that are playing the exact pitch and we can see both of these have the sine wave selected. And what you wanna do is play around with the level and course to kind of get different ratios. Now the ratios that come uh, from a FM synth, they don't function like a traditional pitch, uh, you know, like octave selector in a uh, subtractive synth or wavetable synth. What these course knobs do is they actually act as ratios. Now two, would be a perfect octave because it's doubling the frequency of the original one. And that gets quite a cool tone out of it, as opposed to. And then we can go three, which adds another of the fundamental frequency on top. And we essentially move up what's called the harmonic series. Now I'll leave a link to explain the harmonic series below because it's something that's really key to understand when using FM synthesis, but Practically speaking, and I don't want to get overly complicated, basically you can just move these knobs to create really cool sounds. And you know, you get some really sick sounding things out of it if you modulate. And then move this as well. That's where a lot of this power comes from in FM synthesis, as you can already hear. Now you can obviously change things like the fine pitch too. This adds like a nice kind of wobble to the sound, which I really like. And kind of a natural movement too. And you can basically go crazy with different layers. I can add another one up here and... Do another layer of modulation on top of that. And in addition to all of this uh, I'm doing here is you can shape the envelope of each of these modulators and carriers. For example, if I turn off C again, and I can change the decay envelope here, you'll notice that I get a much more bright tonal sound at the beginning, but then it decays down. So even though this uh, is open the whole time, the main carrier, this kind of gives it a nice pluckiness because the level is basically being modulated by this envelope and that's great. We can do this at multiple stages as well. go back and do other layers and you notice if I turn all of this off nothing comes through because this is what we need to send to the output I'm going to turn off the filter here as well because by default the filter does kind of affect the sound quite a lot and you can see the power of using these harmonic ratios to get completely different textures and moving them and modulating them, etc. Now, I just want to kind of go over some best practices because you can hear there's a lot of potential in FM synthesis, but it kind of requires uh, knowledge and skills in order to harness the power of it to get what you want. First and foremost, I, as I mentioned, using sine waves or less harmonically complicated waveforms from this wave selector here, makes things a lot easier in the long run because you're already generating those really complicated sounds to begin with. But beyond that, it's important that you're playing notes in the range for the sound that you're trying to create. For example, if you're trying to make a bass, play up low, uh, play down lower because if you play up high, you get a very different sound, right? So it's very important to kind of get that right. And then we want to shape the sound for the range you're playing in. So if I want to turn this into more of a pluck sound, I'd probably make the original pluckier. Probably move these back a bit more. Maybe I'd add a bit of attack just to add some natural movement in some kind of places. And you know, you'd shape the sound depending on what you're trying to go for. Um, I would recommend if you're doing basses, you can get away with generally a lot more coarse 
and a lot more intense modulation. But for more simplistic kind of plucky or pad sounds, you kind of want to do you don't want to do too much complicated modulation. Now, of course, a synth like Operator or FM8 has a lot of the kind of standard features you'd find on a normal synth. You have an LFO for modulating all of the um, uh, destinations. Uh, so that's the pitch. And you notice if you don't modulate one of them, for example, you kind of get a weird texture because this one's pitch is staying the same, but these are all moving. You've of course got a filter section, which can be really handy because sometimes you get too harsh sounds out of FM synthesis. So you can tame it with an envelope. You've of course got a pitch envelope. You can modulate the decay of and kind of get some cool pitch effect. You got things like spread. And you've got a whole other variety of, um, you know, effects, uh, modulation capabilities, and that really is dependent on the exact FM synth you're using. These are just a few kind of standard ones that are on operator and are also included in some of the other ones like FM8 or Citrus in FL Studio. Now, let me kind of show you how this practically played out for those sounds I showed you earlier. If I show you this bass sound, let's look at what's actually going on. Besides a bit of post-processing that's going on, we're using three operators in the standard algorithm. The first one is kind of just playing a plucky sine wave. So let's turn those off. And then we're kind of adding one layer of modulation at two, which kind of gives it that very subtle modulation effect. It's not like anything too kind of harsh. Perfect amount there. Uh, I have messed around with the phase of this particular oscillator because I do find that changing the phase, and that's something for another video, does affect the resulting sound a little more. And I've also added another layer of plus five. That just gives that initial kind of pluckiness to it, especially once I turn off the filter. Just gives that initial pluck to the bass. And then I am controlling it with a little bit of filtering just to make sure that the bass sound doesn't have too much um, top end. You can play around with the exact settings there, but that's kind of a nice bass pluck sound. And then I just use a bit of uh, saturation and compression in Camel Crusher. To get that kind of nice crunchy bass sound for the pad, I've used a bit of reverb at the end here, so I'm going to turn that off. But if we go into a better range, what we're doing here is we're doing a lot of harmonically complicated uh, modulation with FM in the standard configuration is again. So we're adding all four layers, but we're actually treating it with a filter to tame it, which is kind of almost treating the FM synth like a subtractive synth. <laughs> So that's the original sound. It's got a bit of pitch envelopeing there. That's kind of giving it that at the beginning. But really, if we turn both those off, what we're getting is a standard sine wave with a bit of decay just to kind of give it a natural, uh, you know, tapering off over time. Let's turn off these other two. We're at B, we're adding a bit of extra course at two. A bit of fine there to add a nice bit of movement as well. You hear that? Well, 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 sound is kind of adding that nice movement we want. And that's what we get by slightly detuning these oscillators or operators rather. Similar pr principle to detune in a synth like Serum. We add another layer with a bit more fine and a little bit less level to kind of just add yet another layer of complexity. But it really starts to feel out the sound. Both of these have different uh, sine waves with different phases with a slightly different decay envelope as well to kind of give that movement. And that fine pitch really adds quite a lot. And then we're just adding a bit of a nice kind of attack at the beginning with this one. It's just kind of making the sound have a nice defined start. And we're using a bit more of a higher um, ratio six to one there. And we're filtering it down. We're actually using a negative envelope so it sweeps up with the filter. And we're just adding that little bit of pit, 
pitch modulation there. And just this reverb preset with Ableton Live 11's new uh, great hybrid reverb device. Okay, we got the bell. So the bell is probably one of my favorite sounds. We're using this really cool echo as well, which I'll turn off. I'll just play it for you again first though. And I think bell sounds are great for FM synthesis because there's a lot of cool kind of like top end textures. And one thing I use in this particular sound is the fixed mode on uh, the operator here. Now what the fixed mode is doing is basically instead of it matching the pitch of the note that's coming in, we can actually set the exact frequency to kind of create this um, belly type sound, which you know, if you hit like a glockenspiel, the metal has a resonant frequency, which is kind of always there. And I wanted to replicate that with FM synthesis. So I times the frequency by 10 to get a 6.3 kilohertz uh, kind of modulation on the entire thing. I'm actually using the two um, outputs here with one modulator each. And what this is doing is meaning A and C are sending directly to output. So you can hear it's kind of like two layers to the synth. One's this, that's the top end with that nice kind of metallic sound. And this is the bottom end. And this harmonic kind of sound to it is really nice because we actually move the uh, C up three and that's adding it up an octave and a fifth, I believe. So it's quite a nice sound to it, um, which I really liked. We could obviously go down to two, which is just an octave, but I kind of liked this sound. Or we could go up four, which is a two octaves. But that three just added such a nice effect. So I'm using this bottom end to kind of get the body of the bell sound. Standard sine wave with a more kind of squarey wave. One thing I will cover in another video is the additive functionality of FM synthesis or FM synth like operator. I've created more of a square wave by manually drawing in these harmonics. Don't worry about that for now. And that's just kind of given it more of a rich sound. I've added a bit of a pluck to this one. So that gives it that movement as well as a bit of fine pitch to give it some instability there. Really love this feature. And then on this one, we're using a three course as the basis here. It's a nice kind of decay there and a bit of release as well to kind of give it that nice kind of airy sound. And all we're doing is modulating it with that fixed uh, operator. So you notice whenever I play a different note, that kind of tonality remains the same throughout rather than something like that. And I just blended the level to taste there with that one. And then combined, you get this really cool effect. You could of course increase the level depending on between C and A what you want as kind of blend of layers. Add a bit of pitch enveloping and the spread feature to give it that thickness. Without it, really, really nice there. Turned off the filter and then just added a bit of echo, shimmer, reverb kind of effect to get a really cool bell kind of atmospheric sound out of it. And that's just a few examples of what you can really do with FM synthesis. To top this video off, I just wanna show you a few recommendations I have for FM synthesis. Um, of course, you've got your stock tool. So in Ableton, you have Operator, uh, which I just used, so I don't have one loaded up there. Uh, in FL Studio, you have Citrus. And in Logic Pro, you have the EFM1 instrument, which is a really cool FM synth as well. So if you're in either of those three doors, I'd highly recommend you check out your stock tools before moving on to any third-party ones. That being said, if you don't have a stock tool or you want a good third-party one, here's a few. The first one I'm gonna recommend is Dext by Digital Suburban. Uh, basically, if I load this up here, it's actually based off the original DX7 synth, uh, very similar interface and feel, and it's good for those kind of classic FM sounds. It's got quite a few good presets as well. Let me just play it a bit here. The great thing about Dex is it also has a lot of algorithms. If you notice here, I've got like over 20 
32 algorithms to use and it's got six operators. So it's a bit more in depth. The interface is a bit overwhelming for newbies, but it is a good free option if you want one. The DX7 is very, very similar to the Dex uh, plugin. The difference is it actually looks like the original keyboard. You of course have the functionality of the operators here and the algorithms. You can dive in to the exact programming of each of them by clicking on any of them, which is really cool. I really like their interface. I think it's like taking the best parts of the DX7 and making them into a way better looking synth. And then of course you've got a few uh, controls here. This is based on how it looks on the DX7 as well. So you've got the operators down the side here and you can control the ratios and fine pitch, etc. One of the most popular options for FM synthesis is FM8. Now the benefit with something like FM8, if we look at it here, is that the expert mode allows you to use not only six normal operators, but also a noise uh, amp and like a filter, which can be used to, for what's called filter FMing. Basically it moves the cutoff of the filter at the rate of the modulating frequency instead of just the volume. You can get some really sick effects as you can imagine. So I'd highly recommend playing around with this. At some point I may do an FM8 video dedicated to diving into the more advanced side of FM synthesis. But for now, if you want something that's gonna be basically setting you up for your entire journey of FM synthesis, I'd recommend FM8. Even just these preset like uh, algorithms. Really good, particularly for bass design as well. Lastly, you've got the waves flow motion. So the flow motion is probably a, like one of my favorite interfaces. Uh, it's very visual if you're a visual person, although it's not as complicated or in depth as things like FM8, you can still turn up the volume there a bit, get some really cool effects out of it. You got your four operators in the middle and you can control the ratio, the waveform of each of these here, as well as you've got four modulation sources over on the side, which you can use. And you'll see here that these knobs on the edges of each of these operators control what's sending to what, which is a really fun way of working. So you can send them to the output here, or you can send them to each other. It's really fun. I highly recommend you check this out if you want a bit more creative sound design possibility. Now, if I missed any other good FM synth plugins, please drop a comment below and let me know because I would love to add a recommendation in at some point. Okay, so that just about wraps things up for this video. I really hope that you've gotten something out of this video on FM synthesis and you've been able to feel inspired to get started. And if this video really did help you understand and learn FM synthesis, give it a like because that way someone else will be able to come along and figure it out, out for themselves because it will recommend it to people. And then while you're at that, also feel free to share this with someone, a producer friend, who you think will get something out of this. And lastly, if you liked this and wanna stick around for more content, just hit that subscribe button down in the bottom right and get all of our video updates. Amazing guys, thank you so much. This has been Aiden from EDM Prod. I'll see you in the next one.